Dear students, now we are going to discuss mass action law in detail. Let's start with the statement of mass action law. It states that for any semiconductor under thermal equilibrium condition, the product of the number of holes and the number of electrons is always constant. It is represented as n into p is equal to ni squared, where n represents the number of free electrons per unit volume, that is concentration of electrons. P represents the number of holes per unit volume, that is nothing but the concentration of holes. Ni represents intrinsic concentration. So here under thermal equilibrium condition, the product of the number of holes and the number of electrons is always constant, that is nothing but Ni squared, okay. So this product is independent of the amount of donor and acceptor impurities doped in the semiconductor. Okay, so this product is independent of donor atoms as well as acceptor atoms in the semiconductor. Here the mass action law is mainly used to relate the electron concentration and hole concentration of the semiconductor material. So this concentrations are also related by the law of electrical neutrality that can be explained here. So here we are going to consider the charge densities in N type and P type semiconductors. So in case of extrinsic semiconductors, we have to consider only the majority carriers. Okay. So here N type semiconductor can be obtained by adding donor atoms to the pure semiconductor. In the pure semiconductor, the number of electron is equal to number of holes, correct? The number of electron is equal to number of holes. But in case of n-type semiconductor, the number of electrons can be increased by adding number of donor atoms. So here we can mention the number of free electrons as n suffix capital N. This capital N represents n-type semiconductor, okay? So here... This n is equal to Pn, that is the number of holes present in the intrinsic semiconductor. After adding this donor atoms, we can increase this electrons. So Pn plus Nd. Nd is nothing but the number of donor atoms or the concentration of donor atoms, okay? As we know that the number of donor atoms is far greater than the number of holes in this n type. So we can simply... Ignore this number of holes, we can get the number of free electrons is equal to the number of donor atoms. Okay, so here we are talking about free electrons. Okay, so the number of free electrons is equal to the number of donor atoms. Okay, according to mass action law, n into Pn is equal to Ni squared. From this we can get the concentration of this holes. Okay, in n-type semiconductor, that is equal to Ni squared by Nn. This Nn can be replaced with this Nd. This is very important, okay. So, from this we come to note that the concentration of holes in n-type semiconductor is equal to Ni squared divided by the donor atom. Okay, so this is an important formula. We can use this formula in problem solving, okay. So next, the conductivity of an n-type semiconductor that is equal to Q into Nn into mu n. That is the number of free electrons in the n-type semiconductor. Here mu n is nothing but the mobility of that electron. Here this free electron count can be replaced with the donor atoms count. Okay. This is the conductivity of an n-type semiconductor. The same way we can obtain p-type semiconductor. Here in this P type, the number of free holes is equal to the number of electrons plus the number of acceptor atoms. So here, the number of acceptor atoms is far greater than electrons in this P type because in this P type, the majority carriers are holes. Correct? The minority carriers are electrons. So here, this acceptor atoms count is far greater than this electrons we can simply neglect this np here so the number of free holes is equal to the number of acceptor atoms in this p type the same way from mass action law 
Here n into p is equal to ni square. We can get the concentration of this electron by using this formula. This number of free holes can be replaced by this acceptor or terms. Okay, so this is the formula for this concentration of electrons in p type semiconductor. Similarly, the conductivity can be obtained as q into n a into mu p. So this are the formulas. By using these formulas, we can solve problems in concentration of semiconductor materials. Okay.